Cool. Uh, yeah, so hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our virtual session of uh, ingesting data into the lake. How is copying to? Um, I'm Jackie. This is Yanghua. Um, just a little bit about us. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Databricks. I uh, was a graduate from University of Michigan. Uh, I'm in the data ingestion team. I have worked on copying to uh, data color mapping and all other uh, wire from Databricks. Hi, my name is Yanghua, software engineer in Databricks. So I got my master's degree from UT Austin. I'm also on the ingestion team, working on the copying to autoloader and some project from Spark and Delta Lake. Yeah, awesome. So uh, I will hand over to Yao Hua for now to get started. Thanks, Jackie. So firstly, what is copying to? So copying to is a SQL command. It is an efficient, retrieval, and item potent operation, taking full advantage of Spark so every single file is ingested exactly once. So that means you can basically rerun your copy into query multiple times without introducing duplicated data. We will talk a little bit about the architecture of copying to in the next slide. So copying to also has an easy to use feature which let customer to use temporary credential and encryption to access protected data set. You can also concurrently ingest your data with copying to the exactly one's ingestion is still guaranteed. As I mentioned before, copy into is a retrieval operation. We use RocksDB internally to deduplicate files. Those have already been ingested. And we take advantage of Spark and only scan and read files after deduplication and finally ingest into Delta Lake table. Why copy into? So firstly, to load data into Lakehouse, our ingestion team provide two great products. One is called Autoloader. It's a streaming way to ingest your data. It can incrementally and efficiently process new data files as they arrive in cloud storage without any additional setup. But today we focus on the copying tool. Copying tool is more like a one-time bug ingestion. To load your data in batches, you can schedule your copying to command by Databricks jobs or schedule DB SQL query. So you can run it regularly and incrementally append your data to the target delta table. You can also trigger by event by using some cloud function and orchestrator. And finally, the Partner Connect at Databricks platform also leverage the copy into and integrate with the partner to bring data into Delta table. Before continue, there are two related sessions about how to ingest data. We strongly encourage all of you to attend and watch those great sessions by my colleagues. One is called Hassle-Free Data Ingestion into Delta Lake by Brock and Emma. The other is moving to the lake house, fast and efficient ingestion with autoloader by Emma and Eric. So let's find some example about how to ingest with copying to. If you have a directory and you want to copy files from it, you only need to provide three things, a target delta table, a source path, and a file format. That's it. That's so easy to bring your data into Databricks platform. If you only want to ingest specific files under a directory, you can provide file name from it up to a thousand files. So by running the copy into command, we only load those files into the target Delta table. You can also provide some common format options to filtering your source data with time, with past glob. You can also recursively load files from a multi-level directory and disable the partition inferring by citing some format options. For every single file format, they have their specific option. Take CSV as an example. You can tell the copy to whether or not the CSV file has header or you can set the multi-line to true. 
if your CSV record spans across multiple lines? What if you have run copy into command several times and you want to re-ingest all files again? We provide a copy option called false. So if set it to true, item potency is disabled and the files are loaded regardless of whether they have been loaded before. You can also involve your schema while loading your data by copying to command. For example, you add some new column in your source data file, you can easily just set a copy option called merge schema to true to involve your target delta schema while loading the new data. Error handling is also extremely important. Since DBR 11.0, we introduce a format option called ignore corrupt files. So what is corrupt file? Well, it's the same definition as Spark to handle corrupt files. For example, files with an incorrect file format as you specify in the copying to command, or maybe file, file to decompress or unreadable. And the very nice thing about how copying to handle incorrupt file is we will ignore those corrupt files without writing them into RocksDB. So you can fix your corrupt file and rerun the copy into command to re-ingest those data. To give you a better understanding of your data, we add a new operation statistic called num skip corrupt files. So it tells you how many corrupt files skipped by the copy into command. Here is an example. The result returned by the copy into command shows we inserted 10 rows, but we have three files are skipped because they are corrupted. Some user also really want to validate their data before ingesting it. That's why we introduced a new copy into mode called validate. So validate is a dry run with several checks like item potency check, permission check, schema check, and some delta related checks. You can basically preview your data before actually ingesting it. If it looks good to you, you can remove the validate and break the data into the target table. Here's an example of validate mode. The nice thing about validate is you can specify how many rows you want to validate, such as validate all, or maybe just validate 15 rows. Next, I would like to talk more about authentication and encryption for the copying tool. Why is that important? So imagine if you cannot be granted long live access to data files in your organizations or scope access for just a subset of files. Or maybe you want to share your data with partners so partner can interact with your data and ingest into Databricks Lakehouse platform. That's why we need temporary credential for copying too. Right now, we have added support for several temporary credentials and encryption. For AWS, we support SDS token and an assumer role with temporary access. Apart from that, we also support server-side encryption with customer-provided key. So you need to specify your encryption type to AWS SACC and also provide a master key. But it's only for the case when the key is provided by customer, so that means for example, you still can use AWS KMS Manage Key to access your encrypted data and copy into Lakehouse. For Azure, we support SES token for both ADS Gen2 and Azure Block Storage. We are in planning to support more temporary credentials and encryptions in the future. Here is the example. With a newly introduced with credential syntax, you can use the S3 temporary credential 
to access your protected data in S3 by specifying AWS access key, AWS secret key, and an AWS session token. Same thing for copy from encrypted data with customer provided key. Set the type to AWS SSEC, which stands for server side encryption with customer provided key, and also provide your master key. To access data storing in Azure Store systems, for now, we support temporary credentials like Azure SAS token. It works for both ADLs Gen 2 and Azure Block Storage. Next, my colleague Jackie will talk more about concurrent ingestion with copying too. And also, he will show you a really cool live demo covering almost every feature of copying too. Jackie. All right, thanks, Yahua. And now I'm going to talk about concurrent ingestion using Copy Into. Uh, this is the new feature that we introduced uh, in Deliverx Runtime 10.5 and beyond. So instead of blindly just fail, now if you run Copy Into concurrently, it's going to try to um, uh, ingest all the files for you, right? So now you can launch your Copy Into queries from multiple threads, multiple Spark sessions, or even multiple clusters. and one thing we do require is that you ingest non-overlapping files, because if you recall, copy into is an idempotent operation. So we would still require this uh, exact once ingestion guarantee. So if you try to you know, copy duplicated files, uh, the command will still steal through errors. Um, and this feature is only supported when your target table lives in a cloud storage, like uh, all Databricks managed tables, S3 tables, um, Azure tables, or GCP tables, et cetera. And you, some of you, if you see this feature, you might be tempted to you know, split up a big batch into like multiple smaller batches and run copy into concurrently. Uh, this is not recommended for performance sake because uh, due to how Spark paralyzes underlying operation, if you have the chance to ingest in one larger batch, uh, please do that. Um, but for those of you who, who have like pretty complicated ingestion pipelines where you have to synchronize you know, uh, multiple copy into jobs and makes life hard for you, uh, now you can rely on this feature to simplify your pipeline, um, as well as getting some performance boosts because your command will never fail. If you see it's like not overlapping files. Cool, now let's move to the demo. Uh, here I have a notebook, uh, just for simplicity. Now, of course, all these commands are also runnable in DB SQL environment. Um, so first I have a set setup process that just you know, create some dummy data. And now let's move to the basic use cases. Uh, let's use the database. Let's check out the file the duplication feature of copying to. So let's say we are exploring this source directory, have, which have um, three pocket files. And we can just do a copy into into a data table from those three pocket files. And you see three rows in, is, has been ingested because you know one row corresponds to each file. And let's check out the target table and there's three rows. And if we run this command again, you will see zero rows being ingested because you know, uh, we copy into internally keeps track of the files that have, have been ingested and it will never do uh, duplicate ingestions. And of course, still remaining with three rows. But if you want to override the behavior, you can specify this force parameter and uh, you will forcefully ingest those duplicate files for you. And then you will see six rows. Now, if we want to copy some selected files instead of everything in the directory, uh, now let's explore this new folder. And let's say we just want to ingest a single file. Now what we can do is to you know, just copy the file in this files parameter. And this will only look at that single file and in just one record. And guess how many are there in the table? Seven, right? Okay, now let's explore some format options. Uh, let's, take, let's take a look at another folder, which is called CSV with header. And as the name suggests, it contains some CSV files, each one with header. And if you just run these commands blindly, uh, it's gonna fail because uh, by default, CSVs are, CSV columns are inferred as these weird names and with a uh, string data type. But what we would like to do is if we try to explore some of these uh, CSV files, 
like that. You will see what we would like to do is to use the header as the column name. And also we try to infer say this one as an integer. So what we can do is to specify infer schema and header in the format options. And if we run this, it's gonna successfully copy the data. And now we have 10 rows. Uh, the complete list of format options is available on our document site. So please check those out. Now let's uh, check out schema evolution. Now this, we have a new directory called Parquet New Schema. Um, if we just try to run this in, and try to copy that into our existing uh, table, uh, it's gonna fail because you see that, oh, you have a data, your data contains an extra column. What do we do about it? So what you can do is to have this merge schema copy option. Um, and if you run that, it's gonna evolve the target delta tables schema for you. And you will see the table now has three columns with a score extra column. And some of the data will be null because you know, those data were copied before and they didn't have any data inside this column. <coughs> and another small feature we added uh, in DBR 11.0 uh, is you can create schemaless delta tables. So instead of having to specify, like for example, like this ID int, uh, schema string. Now I can just drop drop everything and create a schemaless table. And then with copy into, you can also specify merge schema and um, basically initialize the table with both a schema and some data. So that hopefully that's going to simplify some of the ingestion pipeline as well. Now moving on to some advanced use cases. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is validation mode. Uh, it's introduced since DBI 10.3. And now we have a table that contains some constraint, which checks, make sure the ID is greater than two. And if we try to copy some data that uh, fail this constraint, it's gonna immediately fail because it violates the constraint. And obviously no data will be copied. But now if we try to copy some valid data, um, it's gonna do, show you a preview of the data you're, you're, you're about to copy. In this case, DEF was four, five, six. And if you run the, check out the target table, still nothing is ingested because it's just a validation. And of course you can change the row parameter to, spell, to you know, validate however many rows you, um, <clears throat> you want to. By default it's 50, but you can specify this number as an arbitrary number as you want. Cool. And uh, now let's check out how to handle some erroneous files with some new options we introduced in DBI 11.0 plus. Uh, one of them is called ignore craft files. So what this does is that say you have a target directory uh, and let's try to make this file say, we try to crop this file, right? Um, and we're just gonna put some random strings and crop it into this parquet. Um, and if we just try to run this command without any uh, uh, format options, it's gonna throw a bunch of error because it can't read the footer. That means the parsing failed. But now if you specify this ignore craft file option, um, it's gonna work because uh, it's gonna copy the, the two files that actually can be copied and um, skip the files that can't. We also support uh, this, another option called ignore missing files. You can check the doc to see uh, what that does. Now let's move on to authentication encryption using temporary credentials. Um, I'm gonna use Azure here as an example, but uh, we also have full support for S3 as well. So please check the doc for that. Um, now, if we're trying to just copy this, run this command to copy some files from uh, my dummy S, uh, ABFS container. It's gonna say it's gonna, it's gonna fail because it doesn't have any credentials. But now if we try to go back to the Azure portal and let's say, let's try to generate an SAS token for this, right? And I'm gonna give it read and list. Generate this SAS token, Let me copy that. And let's put it here. And if we run this again, uh, it's going to use that temporary credential and actually copy the data for you. 
And if you check out the target table again, you will have uh, three rows because it's the new table. Pretty simple, right? And finally, we're going to check out the concurrent copying too. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to use the thread pool here. Um, but um, obviously, you can run this from multiple clusters, multiple notebooks, etc. Um, so here, I'm going to have some non-overlapping files. Uh, <coughs> It's called Parquet and Parquet New to two different directories. So let's just run those. And you will succeed. And if you check out the target table, you will have six rows because three for each directory, which is correct. But now if you attempt to copy some non overlapping files, let's say the same uh, target folder by mistake or something, if you run that, One of the uh, queries is going to exception out, uh, saying duplicate files were committed. And if you check out the target table right now, you will have nine rows because one of the one of the operations succeeded, but the other one failed. So what you can do right now is basically um, rerun those two queries or rerun the failed queries. Um, if anything's copied into the add impotent, you don't have to worry about data duplication at all. Um, so what also we want to reinforce here is that um, most of this command, if not all of them, uh, can also be run in a DB SQL environment. Uh, I'm going to use this Azure copy as an example. So uh, let's just copy this query. And here I have a, a DB SQL editor. Um, we have an endpoint setup and pointing to our uh, target database. So if we just simply copy this query and um, let's just try to run this, um, since this table is in the Hive Meta store, so everything will be shared uh, between uh, DB SQL and the data science and engineering environment we just saw. And you, as you can see, we can just zero rows because as you as you know, copying to keeps track of all the files being ingested. So since we did it before, there'll be um, no further rows being ingested. Uh, that's pretty much for the demo. Just for summary, uh, this, this talk basically covers all sorts of use cases and uh, functionalities to copy into. Please check out the other loader session um, later. And for copy into, in summary, it supports efficient uh, and item potent ingestion operations. It has a lot of use cases, there's a lot of functionalities, you have different options, you have validation mode, you have error handling options, temporary credential, authentication encryption, and of course, concurrent copying to, uh, copying to operations. So that's pretty much it. Um, feel free to read the documentation on our website and find the notebook on our website as well. And of course, try to watch you can watch the part one, two, and three of our hassle-free data ingestion web webinar series to figure out how to utilize both other loader and copy into to, to uh, ingest data into your Delta, delta table. And that's it. Thank you so much.